A little under a decade ago, Chevrolet introduced a new subcompact SUV to the segment called the Trax. Now, the Trax clearly became the butt of rental car jokes due to its affordability and somewhat dopey exterior styling. Now, thankfully for 2024, there's an all new version of the Trax. And as you can see from the design, this is truly the story of when an ugly duckling becomes a swan because this is one of the most attractive, affordable SUVs that you can buy. So today we're actually out here in Asheville, North Carolina. And the big question I went answered, if you guys are looking for an affordable small SUV, does the all-new Trax finally deserve to make it to your shortlist? Stay tuned to find out. And before we start talking about the beautiful new exterior styling of the Trax, let me go ahead and show you guys what's underneath the hood. Now, being that this is the company's most affordable model, there is no hybrid option. In fact, Chevy technically lopped off a cylinder for the one engine choice. This is a 1.2 liter gasoline direct injection three cylinder. That's right, this is now a three cylinder compared to the four cylinder in the prior generation. It does make around the same horsepower though, 137 horsepower. However, this now has 162 pound feet of torque. I know that doesn't sound like a lot of power, but remember, remember, this vehicle competes with cars like the Hyundai Venue, the Nissan Kicks, the Ford Echo Sport. So it actually has best in class power for the segment. It all goes out through a six speed automatic transmission. Uh, there is no CVT available. And this vehicle only comes with front wheel drive, which is technically a downgrade from the prior generation, which did offer all wheel drive. Chevrolet says if you want all wheel drive, they will happily sell you the bigger, slightly bigger Trailblazer, which does offer, offer all wheel drive. Now fuel economy, this is rated to get 28 in the city, 32 on the highway. It is recommended to just run on regular gas. Chevy doesn't quote any performance figures, but we'll try to see if we can do a zero to 60 test out here in Asheville on these local roads. Uh, and in terms of the curb weight, I don't have that final spec. However, the old Trax was around 3,300 pounds. I suspect this one should be a little bit more, maybe around 3,500 pounds. And this vehicle is not rated to tow because it is designed to be more like an economy uh, SUV that's really just a lifted hatchback. Now, uh, let's go ahead and close up the hood of this vehicle because I wanna show you guys the beautiful exterior styling. Now, Chevy offers a lot of trims on this vehicle, starting on the base LS. This is the active trim, which is technically a top of the line, but there's also an RS trim that gives you a little bit more sporty accents. Technically, they're both top of the line vehicles, but when you look at the styling of this vehicle, just look at it. It, it looks really impressive, especially when you guys get it in the right color combination. Uh, the vehicle itself is riding on an all new platform. It has the latest version of the Chevrolet Bowtie grill with the black painted or the black accented Chevrolet Bowtie. The grill itself with the piano black accents, this red exterior color, and then the headlights. You can see all Traxxas, even the base versions come with full LED headlights. Although it's not technically a full LED, you have an LED low and high beam, LED, LED daytime running light, but you can see the turn signal down here is just an incandescent design. Uh, there is no fog light, at least on this particular model, but I love how even though this is the on, on the base end, you can still get an LED headlight, which is gonna be standard equipment. Uh, the RS version is gonna have a slightly more sportier look to it. And really, when you look at the vehicle from this angle, you can really see how much wider it is. It's actually almost four inches wider overall than the prior generation. They also lowered it by about four inches as well to give it again, a much more premium stance. Uh, and then moving around the side, pro side profile, this is also a significantly bigger vehicle. That's the thing about this class. If you look at something like the Hyundai Venue, the Trax is now about 20 inches longer than the Venue and about 10 inches longer than something like the Nissan Kicks. Chevy actually extended the overall length of this car to 179 inches long, which is about 10 inches longer than the prior generation. Its wheelbase is around 106.3 inches long. That's a six inch stretch compared to the old track. So again, that's the reason why this vehicle looks a lot nicer. And it's also the reason why it gets more interior space versus a lot of the competition. You can see the wheels. If you guys go for the base LS, you'll have a 17 inch steel wheel with a wheel cover. Uh, this model here, the Active has an 18 inch black finished five spoke wheel. It looks pretty attractive. There's also in the RS trim, which comes with a 19 inch wheel with kind of like a two tone machine look. Uh, that actually has the widest tire up to 245 width tire. The Active version has a slightly narrower tire. It's a 225.55. Um, again, on an 18 inch wheel, you have all disc brakes, which is nice. You have an independent front suspension and a twist beam semi-independent the rear, because remember, this is supposed to be an affordable vehicle. Chevrolet also says the ground clearance of this vehicle is around 7.3 inches. So it's not quite as high as what you're gonna find on like a Trailblazer, 
but you don't really need all that extra ground clearance because remember, this vehicle is only front wheel drive. Now being an SUV, you have the unpainted wheel arch trim along the lower side skirt as well. You have black painted side mirrors. You have these uh, aerodynamic roof rails, which are black or gray painted. Then my tester for an extra 900 bucks, I believe, also includes a sunroof. There is no pano roof available on this vehicle. Remember, it's designed to kind of be at the very low end of the totem pole, but it still looks really, really attractive. I also like how there's no bright chrome along the window trim. Instead, Chevy decided to go with a darker finish to it. And then when you look at the rear of the vehicle, this is probably my least attract or least favorite angle of the vehicle. Personally, I think I see a lot of design cues here from like a Nissan Rogue Sport, or they call it a Qashqai in other markets. I don't particularly love the look. It just has this really strange looking taillight design. And as you can also see, it's an all incandescent design for the taillight. So uh, uh, basically incandescent bulbs for the brake lights, for the reverse light, for the turn signal. I think it would have looked a lot better if it was an LED, but I guess they were trying to save a little of cost here and there. You can see in terms of the badging, you also have the same black bow tie badge, no visible exhaust tips. Instead, you kind of have like this dark chrome finish here with the uh, unpainted areas of the rear bumper. But overall, it's definitely a much better looking vehicle versus the prior generation. Now, opening up the trunk, there is no power lift gate available on this vehicle. Typ typically in this class, you don't get that feature, but because the new Trax is so much larger, you get more cargo space. You get up to 25.5 cubic feet, which you can see with the seats uh, are folded up. If you look underneath here, you can see there's also a temporary spare tire that also gives you a little bit of underfloor storage. If you fold down the second row seats, uh, it'll expand it out to just over 52 cubic feet, which is an increase of about five cubic feet compared to the prior generation. Now, moving on to the interior of the all new second generation tracks. This is also where you're gonna be pretty impressed, especially if you guys had the old vehicle. Let me first get in and shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk considering the, again, the price point of this vehicle. Now you can see here's the key fob for the car. If you guys want the intelligent access key with push button start, you have to step it up to at least the LT trim. You can see this is Chevrolet's newest key. It's got lock, unlock, or unlock, lock, remote start, and panic function. No open up the trunk because remember, it doesn't have a power lift gate. Uh, but when you go for that higher trim, you can see the button to start up the engine is right there. And then as you can hear, it has the typical GM chimes, but this upper trim, the active trim does have some pretty great Great tech, especially at the price point. Again, you have an eight inch fully digital cluster here in front of the, in the instrument panel. And then you have an 11 inch digital touchscreen over here in the center stack, which includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The design of this also looks really upscale. In fact, for sitting in here at a glance, you wouldn't expect this to be an economy car until you start poking around at the actual rest of the materials. Because as you can hear, the door panel is a hard touch injection molded plastic. It does have a net relatively nice graining to it. It's got a chrome, accented door handle here. The window, you can see the driver window is automatic down and the rear as well, the passenger. So all the windows are automatic down, but they're not one touch up. I kind of wish that Chevy would have just did it both ways, but it's kind of nice that this price point you can see over here, however, where my elbow rests, it is hard touch plastic. So don't love that, but there is some really nice contrasting yellow stitching over here. Uh, with some faux leather material uh, on the door panels. You can see the rest of the dashboard layout has a nice design, but once you start poking around, you can see hard touch plastic with this kind of really interesting texture to it here with some silver painted plastic or gray painted plastic over here on the dashboard. Down here, you can see hard touch plastic. You have a circular dash fan over there onto the sides with a more traditional dash fan over here. The instrument panel hood, you can see it's all hard touch plastic, but hey, what I like, however, is the nice leather wrapped wheel that you get on this trim. It's got some contrasting stitching. It offers a manual tilt and telescoping ability. No paddles on the wheel. Instead, there's a shift toggle here if you wanna take control of the transmission. And then there's also some nice upscale touches like heated steering wheel. You have three level heated seats, which is nice. I also have an eight way power driver's seat. Uh, which is really unexpected. It also has two-way lumbar. So technically it's a 10-way power seat, a four-way manual on the passenger side, which again, to be expected. This, these seats themselves, Chevrolet calls them Evo Tech. So it's a fake leather material with the contrast yellow piping and stitching. Uh, and overall the seats, they feel a little bit hard. Uh, they're not super comfortable, but try the seats out for, your, your, for yourself. See if you like the seats. Uh, over here, in terms of the rest of the center stack, you can see wireless phone charging pad. This controls your six speed automatic. When I put the vehicle in reverse, you can see there's your backup camera, which basically allows you to basically turn on and off just the trajectory, which it does have, which is nice, but no full 360 camera. The quality and the resolution, however, is just fine. This system here, you can see 
going back to the Chevrolet or the Chevy head unit here, uh, it's pretty basic in terms of the features. Uh, you can basically go into your settings. You can go into the climate over here where you can put it on the screen. Uh, and then you can also turn on and off your traction control from the screen. It's not actually a separate button, which I think I would have preferred that instead. It does not have features like embedded GPS. Instead, you're gonna go to the CarPlay for that. You can go into the settings here and change a couple things. I will say it's a little bit slow when I'm cycling between different sources. Um, I actually wish that it was a little bit snappier. So I'm guessing Chevrolet put a slower processor in the system, which I could kind of see because the graphics on these screens don't look as nice as what you're gonna find in some of their more expensive products. I especially don't like how in this instrument panel, that is the look that it gives you and there's no tachometer. I don't understand why there's no tachometer. I was trying to adjust a couple of things here. Uh, again, this allows me to go to music here. I can choose my different audio sources. I can go to phone right there, but if I'm trying to like change the layout of this, Chevrolet doesn't offer that. So that's kind of just the way it looks. Um, and I, I kind of wish that they had done something a little bit more elaborate there. But uh, over here on the rest of the center stack, you have a single zone automatic climate control function, which is included on the high trims. You have two USB charging ports, an A, or an a and a C, and then you also have a wireless phone charging pad. Your lane keep assist is over here. Um, and then you also have your auto start stop defeat. There are no adjustable drive modes in this vehicle as well, which I kind of was surprised to not find. You also have some cup holders here with more piano black plastic, a little bit more storage here. And then you can see this area here is slightly padded, although I would be nice if this was stitched in the same leather. And then you open this up, you can see it's actually a relatively deep storage compartment, but there's no power outlet in there or any kind of light. Uh, and whatnot, but uh, above me, you can see this sunroof is optional, like part of a sunroof package for 900 bucks. It does allow you to open it up completely, which is nice, or you can also tilt it up. Uh, there is no panel roof available, which I didn't really expect, but overall, um, it definitely is uh, nice that you get the sunroof feature. If you look at the glove box, you can see it's actually, it's damped, which is nice. Um, it's not lined with felt, but it's actually a pretty big bin size. Uh, and then the stereo in this vehicle is like a six speaker Chevrolet audio system. It doesn't sound all that great. You can't get any upscale audio system in it, uh, especially for the price. But overall, it will still impress you, especially with the size of the displays. It's got relatively good fit and finish. The materials are a little bit cheap. I wish the seats were softer, but overall, you have to remember this is their most affordable model. And considering that, this is actually a relatively nice cabin. Looking at the back seat of the redesigned tracks, this is also where Chevrolet took advantage of the increase in size because as I get back here, you can see the legroom is plentiful, especially considering where this vehicle competes in. Chevy says you have around 38 inches of legroom back here. 38 inches easily makes this among the biggest in the class. This is probably a solid four to five inches more versus the competition. You can see for somebody my height, I'm five foot seven. I can get back here. I can cross my legs pretty easily. Uh, there's a ton of overall space. There's a flat floor back here, which is nice because they don't offer all wheel drive. So Chevy was able to give that back in terms of the interior space. You don't have any rear seat air vents, just a storage cubby here, but thankfully they still threw in two USB charging ports. You have one storage pocket on the passenger side. Materials quality is hard touch plastic. I wasn't expecting anything nicer. They also didn't, they skimped here. They didn't give us the leather stitching like you get on the front. And then this again, hard touch plastic. I think this area here should have been soft because this is where you're gonna be resting your elbows. So that's something that I think they could have improved. No center armrest over here. Um, so for those of you who are like looking for cup holders back here, there are none. There are just a couple of door bottle holders here on each of the door panels, but overall the back seat, while it is skimping on some features, you do get a USB charging port and you also have some of the biggest leg room in the class. So with the price of new vehicles getting very expensive nowadays, you don't really find a new vehicle that's as affordable as the all new Chevy Trax. And also the fact that GM was able to make this car cheaper versus the previous generation is a pretty incredible feat. Now they did that of course, by making some compromises because we no longer offer all wheel drive on this vehicle. And technically GM lopped off a cylinder because the old Trax had a four cylinder. This now switched to a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder. Thankfully horsepower, stays roughly the same. Torque, however, did go up ever so slightly. But let's go ahead and see what we can get zero to 60 wise in this vehicle. It's not quite the straightest road, but we'll give it a try. We'll brake torque it. Spinning out the front tires because uh, it's only front wheel drive. Definitely going slightly downhill, but on that run, we got a little over nine seconds, 9.1 seconds. Now I suspect on a more level surface, this car will probably be closer to the 10 second mark, which it is a very, very slow vehicle. I mean, uh, 
the class that it competes with is kind of supposed to go with something like the Nissan Kicks or the uh, Hyundai Venue. So we don't expect something like this to be all that quick, but because of the turbocharged nature of the engine, it does actually have a pretty good amount of mid-range grunt. And the three-cylinder sounds pretty interesting. It sounds a lot better to me versus a four-cylinder. Uh, the drone is kind of just a little bit of a different tone to it because of the odd number of cylinders. And the six-speed automatic that's paired with this engine also is a smooth partner. It's a smooth shifting transmission. Uh, and I have to say, if you guys don't like CVTs, this doesn't have a CVT. So it's kind of one of the you know re or reasons to choose the tracks. It has a torquey three cylinder with a smooth shifting six-speed auto although it's a little bit slow to shift but you know even though this car looks super sporty on the outside it's definitely not super sporty to drive the suspension is independent front torsion beam semi-independent in the rear the steering is light but very devoid of feet uh, feel obviously um, surprisingly though the chassis feels pretty solid uh, and the car rides pretty decently it's also relatively quiet in here considering the price point what i don't like however are the seats they're kind of just hard and they don't offer much in terms of support or lateral support at all um, but overall compared to the prior generation tracks this is just worlds better the chassis is just so much stiffer uh, the car feels like a much more upscale vehicle. It doesn't feel quite like a toy or like a, a cheap economy car um, until you really just put your foot down and you're kind of noticing that it doesn't really, the engine doesn't like to really rev. And that's another thing is this digital cluster, which is included on this active trim. Definitely the graphics don't look quite as upscale as what I've seen in some of other uh, GM products that have a little bit bigger of a screen. What I do like, however, is the 11 inch touchscreen over here, which includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then this particular one that I'm driving also has a heated steering wheel, heated seats, a power sunroof, which is part of an option package. So overall, you have to remember that the Trax is their most affordable vehicle. So you kind of have to reset your expectations, but once you do that, it's actually a really pleasant driving car that should have enough power for most people. Uh, and it should also have enough tech features as well for the majority of, of buyers. Now, in terms of the fuel economy, this car is rated at 2832. I'm not able to do fuel economy testing on this really brief first drive, but that number is actually on the lower end. Uh, just imagine if this car you know, offered like a hybrid option, you can get obviously better fuel efficiency out of even like a bigger vehicle. So you're kind of limited in this particular segment but still you have to remember this car is only twenty thousand dollars in the base end this model that we're driving is a little over twenty six thousand and it's just a lot of car for the money so that's something that i think uh chevy did a really good job is just offering a vehicle for somebody who is on a budget uh, and they also offer it on a vehicle that doesn't look like a penalty box that's kind of my thing about the old tracks just like something like the ford echo sport which i suspect ford may be killing off or redesigning very soon uh, this vehicle doesn't look like a penalty box uh, unlike some of its competitors and it also drives pretty nice it's relatively quiet in here it's just for those of you who actually need all-wheel drive, you're not gonna wanna choose this vehicle, but again, Chevrolet has the Trailblazer for those of you who need to actually have all-wheel drive. So compared to the prior generation tracks, which I actually never had the displeasure of driving and doing a video for you guys, this all new second generation is quite the transformation. Literally, the ugly duckling became the swan. Now, of course, I know styling is always subjective. And while I do think that there are certain angles of the tracks that is very attractive, there are also some slightly unattractive angles. It's really gonna come down to your personal style and, your also, and also your needs. Because after spending the day driving the 2024 model, this vehicle here as an economy subcompact SUV, their most affordable model really makes a great first impression and that's exactly the reason why this it's also the basis of the buick Invista, that coupified suv which i personally think actually looks even better versus the tracks but really what this vehicle is is something that's going to replace your economy subcompact hatchback so think about like if you guys drive a chevrolet sonic or chevrolet spark this is the vehicle you're going to want to replace it with and i think it's a really wonderful direction that chevrolet is heading and for those of you who also want to save a lot of money, this is where this car here is going to fit perfectly into the marketplace. Because even though the power of this vehicle is not a lot, you guys saw 0 to 60 in a little over 9 seconds, I suspect it's going to be closer to 10. Uh, the transmission also works pretty well. The engine has a relatively decent sound in terms of refinement. It has a lot of torque. And also the tech features in this car work pretty well, especially when you consider uh, the price of this vehicle. Because if you guys want the all-new tracks, they are heading to dealerships uh, very, very soon. 
Uh, this vehicle here is going to start at just over $20,000, about $20,400 before destination charge for the base LS trim. That's actually about $1,000 less than the prior generation. $1,000 less. You don't find that in today's world. Everything typically gets more expensive. Now, those of you who want to step it up a little bit to get better features, the LT is going to come in at around $22,000. The Active and the RS trim is going to be the highest version of the tracks. Those typically, those are around $25,000 to start. Um, and with the small option package that this, this model here has with the sunroof, with destination, this model here comes to around $26,900. 27 grand for a brand new SUV that doesn't necessarily offer all wheel drive, but is a great deal, especially when you look at the average new car transaction price being well over $50,000. This is definitely uh, a great deal for those of you who are on a budget, but you also want to get that higher seating position and you also don't want to skimp on technology features, and of course, affordability. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2024 Chevrolet Trax and this active trim. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.